Um, again, we will call this meeting to order at 6.35 p.m. Roll call, please. Trustee Pierce? Present. Trustee Masek? Here. Trustee Peterson? Here. Trustee Bluthart? Here. Trustee Berman is absent. Trustee Dominiak? Here. Mayor Gardner? Present. All right, the um, first item is the uh, mayoral report. And um, we'd like to uh, recognize we have a couple of Vikings groups um, coming in in the next couple of meetings. But the first group that we are going to recognize is the Viking lightweight football team. Are you guys, are you guys here? Uh, all right, here. Why don't you guys come up here so we can see you? Why don't you guys, the parents and the football team, come up here. Flex your muscles a little bit. Come on up. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> kind of line up. Uh, yeah, you can line up and face. You can face the crowd so they see you. You're in huddle formation. All right, and your trophy. You got me the hats. That's a trophy. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't. We're not. Yeah, yeah. All right. I guess. <laughs> All right, so here is the um, Viking uh, lightweight football team. What uh, grade are most of you guys in? Seventh and eighth graders. Okay, so expect big things from the uh, high school team from you eighth graders. Okay, so the, the record, they had a nine and two regular season record, including seven straight wins. Um, I'm sorry if I butcher your names, but the head coach is Chris I, I go. Um Assistant coach is Neil Patel, Bill Wickert, John Victor, Mike uh, Campese. And the team captains were Ethan Patel, Harrison Victor, Jack Halting, and Kyle Wickert. Um, so, again, we want to congratulate you guys on winning that. Where did you get to play the Super Bowl? Where was the game held? All right. So, um, again, I'm glad you're all here. You're all healthy. And uh, start getting ready for the next season. But we want to congratulate you and uh, um, acknowledge you before the Village Board. So, thank you again. All right, congratulations, guys. Thank you for coming in. You guys. Um, big old trophy. Wow. <laughs> I didn't see that. Designing by. That's cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys got to come back when your cheerleaders are here next time to support them, okay? <laughs> All right, we'll let them um, clear out the room. We have uh, several officers, new officers, that are going to be sworn in tonight. So um, I'll, uh, they're, Families and friends want to grab seats or come closer for pictures. Now's the time. Okay. All right, go ahead and fill in those seats. Can I help? Yeah, I've been waiting. I don't know going to be me. All right, so I'll let um, the chief's going to um, go through this, but we are tonight swearing in um, five officers, Officer uh, Alexander um, or Ardonis. We have Officer Sean McMurray, Officer Christopher Smith, Officer Jacob Ferris, and Officer Richard Villanueva. Um, and uh, I'll let Jeff take it from there. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. So tonight we come together as a department in a community to celebrate what is likely a, a, a historical moment for our department. Uh, likely in, in all, all history, or certainly as long as any of us can remember, we've never sworn five officers in at one time. I think our record is three, and that goes back probably almost 20 years since we've done that. So although these officers have nearly a full year of training ahead of them before they'll be approved to be on solo patrol by themselves, this occasion certainly marks the first step in our mission to serve and protect our community with pride and integrity for many years to come. So now I would ask that Officer Alexander Ordinas, Officer Sean McMurray, Officer Christopher Smith, Officer Jacob Ferris, 
Officer Richard Villanueva, and the people they have chosen to pin on their badges this evening join me up front. And friends and family, please feel free to step forward and take photographs if you'd like. <laughs> so I just want to take a minute to introduce, introduce them to our community and let you get to know them a little bit better. So when you receive them on the street, you know, you recognize them and kind of know a little bit about them. So we're going to start with Officer Odinas. Alex was born in Ukraine and came to the U.S. with his parents when he was two years old. He was raised in Buffalo Grove along with his three younger siblings. His interest in pursuing a career as a police officer was sparked while taking criminal justice course at the Lake County Technical College while he was in high school. He joined the Lake County Sheriff's Explorer Post and earned his associate's degree in criminal justice from the College of Lake County. Additionally, he has served as a community service officer with our department, as well as the Wonder Lake Police Department since 2020. Alex is fluent in Ukrainian, which already proved very useful to us last week during our Shop with a Cop event, where he was paired with a mother and a child who were refugees from the Ukrainian war. Because of Alex, the language barrier was removed, and this most deserving young boy could enjoy the experience alongside the other 49 kids that we entertained that evening. Outside of work, he enjoys working out, riding his motorcycle, and spending time with his family. He tells us he looks forward to continuing to serve the Antioch community and is excited to help continue to foster the excellent relationship the department has established with its community. In attendance this evening with him are his parents and siblings. His father will be pinning his badge this evening. Officer McMurray, if you'd step forward just a step. Officer McMurray was born in Oklahoma and currently lives in Round Lake Beach. Sean first became interested in law enforcement when he was about 17 years old, when he was drawn to the profession because of his strong desire to help others. Sean tells us that he was drawn to join our department after seeing the tight bonds that our officers share with one another and how much each of them cares about the Antioch community as a whole. He has completed coursework towards his associate's degree at the College of Lake County and hopes to one day continue his education towards a bachelor's degree. Outside of a work, he enjoys fishing, golfing, staying active, and working on cars. Sean is joined this evening by members of his family and many friends, and his mother will be pinning his badge. Thank you, Sean. Officer Smith, please step forward. Officer Smith was born and raised on the south side of Chicago and is the oldest of three siblings. He tells us that he enjoyed being a role model to others. Since he is honored with being looked up by younger people in his life, he has been driven to work each day to be a better person than he was yesterday, so he continued to be a positive male role model to others in his community. Chris graduated high school from Dunbar Vocational Career Academy in 2013 as the salutor salutorian of his class. He attended Malcolm X College for one year studying radiology before leaving school to work full time to help meet his fam family's needs. His interest in law enforcement came from his positive experiences with the police while he was in high school. He believes he has been called to serve and serve and chose Antioch because of its diversity and how welcomed he felt while exploring our community. He looks forward to becoming a part of our law enforcement family and our Antioch community. Outside of work, he enjoys rock climbing, traveling, bowling, and watching movies. Chris is joined tonight by his family members and his niece and mother will be pinning his badge. Thank you, Chris. Officer Ferris, please step forward. Officer Ferris grew up near Grays Lake with his two siblings. He attended Warren Township High School and spent several years as a member of the Gurney Police Department Explorer Post where he was first exposed to what it was like to be a police officer. After graduating high school, he began working as a security officer at Gurney Mills. During his three years with the mall, he worked his way up to being the assistant director of security. He credits this experience with helping him mature professionally while better preparing him to enter the demanding profession of police work. He enjoys fishing and boating with his family and friends in his free time. He tells me he chose the Antioch Police Department because it reminds him of the town he grew up in where people care about one another and the community supports their police officers. He, he is joined this evening by members of his family and many friends, including other officers from communities who helped mentor and coach him through his journey of becoming a police officer. His mother will be pinning his badge this evening. Thank you, Jacob. Officer Villanueva, do we step forward? Officer Villanueva was, was raised and currently lives in Mundelein and he has one sibling and older sister who has always been one of his role models. His interest in law enforcement began his senior year in high school 
due to the profession's unique challenges and the opportunities it provides to interact with the community daily. He started his high school education, his post high school education at the College of Lake County before transferring to Western Illinois University. He graduated in 2022 with a bachelor's degree in law enforcement and justice administration. Richard tells us that he always wanted to serve a community and be allowed to and be allowed to make a difference. He chose ANIAC because of its hometown feel and the, after experiencing the department's commitment to the values of community policing. He enjoys being active and spending time with his family. He looks forward to contributing to the department's continuation of its strong community bonds. He is joined this evening by his parents and his father will be pinning his badge. Thank you. Now, Madam Clerk, I respectfully ask you to swear in these new officers. I, Alexander Ordinas, having been appointed as patrol officer of the Village of Indian Police Department in the County of Lake, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of patrol officer to the best of my ability. I am Sean McMurray, having been appointed as patrol officer of the Village of Anyak Police Department in the County of Lake, to solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of patrol officer to the best of my ability. I do. I, Christopher Smith, having been appointed as patrol officer of the Village of Anyak Police Department in the County of Lake, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, that I will faithfully discharge the duties of patrol officer to the best of my ability. I, Jacob Harris, having been appointed as patrol officer of the Village of Indian Police Department in the County of Lake, to solemnly swear or affirm that I support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of patrol officer to the best of my ability. I do. I, Richard Villanueva, having been appointed as patrol officer of the Village of Indian Police Department in the County of Lake, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Illinois, 
then I will faithfully discharge the duties of the patrol officer to the best of my ability. I do. All right, thank you. Congratulations. And um, I want to invite, I think the whole department wants to come up and take a picture. So if you guys want to come up here, Norm, lead the charge, bring the whole department up here if you guys want to take a group picture. Are you guys coming up for pictures? Yeah. You want us to stay? Yeah, stay. <laughs> Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Come on, come on. Before you guys go, I they want one more picture with just the chief and the new officers. Steve? Yep. What's that? They're going to come along. Yeah, yeah. Call, yeah. All right. One more with the chief, then. All right. All right. And then um, when you're done, make sure you uh, they come by and. Where are you going? Oh, no, you're fine. Here. Here. With the, 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 the trustees. Congratulations, guys. Wishing you all long careers, and you all made me feel really old tonight. So <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. Congrats, Good luck, guys. guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Otherwise, I would shake your hand at the old. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Chief. Chief, can you hear me? Diane Zoom. Yeah, that's fine. All these guys, luck. I think he's got messed up. That's all right. It's all right. All right. It's fine. All right. Thank you, guys. They're going to take some pictures. Just a couple more announcements before we move on to other business. Um, first, um, in sad news, I wanted to announce the uh, passing of Dean Peterson Sr., um, a lifelong resident of Antioch, um, a family that's been in Antioch for a long, long time. 
Um, unfortunately, this is the third time in the last six months that I'm announcing uh, the passing of a, a close relative to Trustee Peterson. It's her brother-in-law. And um, Dean has also served a long time uh, with the fire district. He's been the president of the fire district um, for probably 20 some years, I'm guessing. And so again, keep the Peterson um, family in your thoughts and prayers. And I know the services are uh, Sunday um, at St. Raphael Church for the wake and the funeral is on Monday. But um, I just want to announce that. And then finally, um, this is our last meeting this year. So I want to wish everybody uh, a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy New Year, and um, have a happy and healthy end of 2022. So with that being said, I will not torture you anymore. And if you'd like to leave the meeting, feel free. And um, while you're while people are exiting, there is a sign up sheet here. If you do want to address the board or on any matters tonight, uh, we have the sheet here. Um, otherwise, we're going to do public comments right after um, right after this. Let's do a two minute break and we'll reconvene. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're gonna call the meeting back to order at 7.03 p.m. Um, next item on the agenda is citizens wishing to address the board. Uh, we have a list here of um, people that have signed up. Uh, Madam Clerk will read the, um, the names off and call you up and we'll give the uh, general rules on the public comment. The opportunity to speak to the board is provided for members of the public who have a comment to make about the business of the board. The board appreciates hearing from stakeholders and values your thoughts and questions. The board strives to make the best decisions for the village and public input is very helpful. The board must protect the civility and decorum of this meeting. Please be respectful for the duties of the board and the democratic process in your comments tonight. Please state your name and address your comments to the board. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Please be factual and courteous and the board requests that you not make statements that are personally disrespectful or condescending to members of the board or staff. To the extent multiple speakers are addressing a single issue, the mayor reserves the right to limit the number of speakers making public comment of a repetitive nature or limit the amount of time for public comment. The board does not respond to comments or attempt to answer questions during the public comment period. All right, thank you. Um, is Jeff still over there? Do you want me to? Hold off on that one. Yeah, I'm gonna Tim. Do you mind if I skip you until there's officer or two? Thank you. Okay. Um, go ahead. First, we have Kathleen Van Van Dean. Hello. Hello. Excuse me. Um, who's managing the clock? Oh, Jim's got it. Go ahead. Yeah. You got, yeah sorry. Sorry, it's loud. It's okay. My name is Kathleen Van Dean. I've been a resident for twenty plus years. Um, in Lake Villa, Lindenhurst. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I served on District 117 School Board two terms. I was in attendance at the planning and zoning meeting on November 2nd, where Michael Garrigan um, went into great detail, answered questions, um, and we addressed the parking lot and the lighting at that meeting. It was passed unanimously. I'm a mother of five children. I just lost my second son four months ago. Um, and I will tell you that I've been going to Families Anonymous for 10 plus years at the ARC. Um, you, and I'd also like to make a note that it's Antioch Recovery Club, not center. It's a club, much like a ministry, much like a church. Um, it has saved my life. Uh, especially after losing my son four months ago. Um, I just want to say that I appreciate and thank Trustee Brent and Mary for their support, knowledge, and backing at the last meeting. And I would also like to say thank you for reconsidering. Um, I'm currently a board member here at the ARC, and my passion is to help people. Um, we do have a lot of kids that struggle with substance abuse, alcoholism, and our club welcomes them to help them. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you. Um, Chief Gutschow. 
How many officers do you still have back there? Back to Tim. Tim. Five or six. Bring them up. Uh, yeah. Officers. <laughs> Um. <laughs> Your second photo up. More photos. No, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> just go over here. Yeah, you guys can stand over here. Everyone stand over here. So just stand over here for a second. It'll be quick. Right. I promise. Yeah, yeah. I won't be... take my whole three. All minutes. right. So uh, go ahead. Well, well Lori's got to. Uh, Call you first. I did. Oh, you did. Okay. Uh, first things first, I would like to uh, extend our condolences to Trustee Peterson. We've uh, only been coming to these meetings for six, eight months, and we hear that far too often. We're very sorry for your loss. Thank you. Secondly, uh, on a more positive note, happy holidays to the trustees, to the, to the staff, to Lori, who's helped us very much, to the mayor. Thank you all. Uh, for our, you know, holding these meetings and being our trustees in our community here. On, this, on October 16th, we had a comedy show and uh, the proceeds were to go to the Antioch Police Department. And we are proud to announce that we raised $1,000 that we will be donating for you guys. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you very much for being there for us. And uh, we truly do appreciate it. That's good. Anything? Anything? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And you guys could take a picture and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You guys are dismissed for, for good, for sure. <laughs> yeah, for now. Just faking the All right. <laughs> that was smart. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks again for your support on that. Um, go ahead. Uh, next is Ashley Emma. Good evening. My name is Ashley Emma. I'm a woman in recovery from the use of drugs in a chaotic manner. I'm also the Antioch Recovery Club secretary. Uh, my public comment is in regard to the inaccurate verbiage on tonight's agenda items, number six and seven. The term recovery center is inaccurate. The Antioch Recovery Club is a club. Uh, while some may consider this a matter of semantics, I believe it's important to make the distinction. A recovery center seeks to temporarily house, provide therapy, and provide other services one would experience if they went to a recovery center. Though one could potentially experience a support group 12 separate otherwise, within a recovery center, they are not mutually exclusive. The Antioch Recovery Club was established 13 years ago and has been providing a safe facility for people recovering from drug and alcohol addiction and their families to attend 12-step meetings and social events for the past 12 years. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Stephen Cooper. Stephen.
Good evening, I'm Stephen Coop, Revan, a resident in Antioch since 1999. Our village is being divided by hateful rhetoric and actions from a local parent group. It's okay to have different philosophical points of view, but it's not okay to attack those who oppose you. And we've seen some of those attacks at previous meetings and it's just unacceptable. Now, District 34 had a board meeting last week and you could just see the division in the room. Even in the way people were sitting, there was clearly a this side and a that side. A concerned mom got up and spoke her mind about the lack of transparency in the district and you could just feel the hatred seething in the room at her. Now I realize this body has very little influence over a school district, but the reason I bring it up here is because this concerned mom happens to be a village trustee, but her first duty is to her son. So when concerned mom Petrina Berman addresses school board, she's just a concerned mom. She's not a village trustee. She's never addressed the school board as a trustee. The folks on the other side of this issue can't seem to draw that distinction. They have appeared here in the past and demanded action be taken against Trustee Berman, even though Trustee Berman has never addressed the school board. Only concerned mom, Petrina Berman has. Trustee Dominic witnessed this firsthand at the last meeting. It's important for this board of trustees to understand who I think these folks are. I think they're motivated by political ideology and they're just not used to being challenged. Because let's face it, most parents in the schools these days don't really know what's being taught. It's not the same as when we were in school. We didn't have all these multiple gender identities back when we were in school to worry about. We didn't have to affirm people's uh, whatever they wanted to be. We didn't have grossly age inappropriate sex ed that's nothing short of grooming. We didn't have books showing boys performing simulated oral sex on men. We didn't, we weren't told we were racist and bigots if we didn't wave certain flags or have certain acronyms after our name. None of that existed when we went to school. So I say, thank God we have such wonderful, determined, concerned moms out there who are exposing this indoctrination and corruption for and showing people what it is. So the opposition trying to silence her is doing it at all costs, even at the cost of her elected position. They don't seem to understand the difference between concerned mom, Petrina Berman, and elected official trustee Berman. And I know you all know the difference here. So please take that into consideration. And when they appear here before you either tonight or at a future meeting and they demand action against trustee Berman, remember that trustee Berman has nothing to do with the school districts. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Alex Kander. Am I speak mic good? Yeah, just say, yeah, say okay. uh, I, I never, I yeah. never do this. Often. State your name for the record. My name is Alex Cantor. Good evening, trustees and mayor. Before I start, let me make it clear because certain people will try to twist my words in ways that I have not said nor will ever say. I am not with any certain group tonight, nor am I a Republican. Everyone will try and say I am. I am an independent and I am a concerned citizen of Antioch. You can't say anything important or anything vital without offending somebody out there. We've all heard, but if I tell the truth, I'm going to get in trouble. Fair enough, but if you imbibe in a lie, you're going to get into trouble as well. So disavow the notion that there is a trouble-free pathway. You're in trouble both ways, so you get to choose your trouble. The greatest trick the devil has ever pulled on the people was making them think he does not exist. There have been certain acts, according to one group, that are twisting words and lying and harassing under these um, acts that are inclusiveness and are moral. But every day by day we go by, we are turning away from God and his teachings. I've been sitting on the sidelines for years, refusing to speak up for the fear of, for the fear of my address being doxxed, of being fired from where I work, never being able to find work again, or for this and for the safety of those I hold dear to my heart. But after seeing what has happened to someone who I'm glad to say is a friend of mine, I realized that sitting by is only helping this problem. I no longer care about the lies or the threats to come for speaking up like I am today. And I encourage everyone listening, don't be afraid of the voices of the internet. It isn't real. It's not real life. 
and everyone hides behind a keyboard and will not say it to your face. Stand up for your kids and stand up for God and his teachings as he will win in the end. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Heidi Wenstrom. Good evening, my name is Heidi Wenstrom. I am not here to persuade you to vote in favor or against the petition for the special use variance for 466 Route 173. I understand that the vote is entirely in your purview as elected officials. In full disclosure, I am related to the owner, but I'm also not here to advocate uh, for the seller's needs. I recognize your authority in this manner, um, in this regard. I viewed your most recent meeting online and I was really quite disheartened by some of the governance practices, enough so that I left my cozy house to come in this evening. Um, I found some of the considerations raised by some board members to be really disquieting. Um, recommending a different standard for notification boundaries rather than following the established practice and legal precedent it, it came across as discriminatory. Requesting a list of addictions that anyone might seek assistance with seemed to me to be a violation of HIPAA. I'm fairly certain that the ARC does not require medical record disclosure when they offer a helping hand. I am struggling to understand something, um, how it makes any sense that the Antioch Recovery Club's present location which is near a school, a playground, a ball field, a community pool, other residents. And yet there are zero issues raised by this board regarding the present location. It honestly seemed like the board was stonewalling for no valid reason other than the proximity of a board member's residence. However you vote tonight is entirely on you and I will support whatever decision you make because those are the roles that you are in. But I'm here tonight to ask that the Antioch Recovery Club be granted the respect that they are due. They have been helping individuals navigate and celebrate recovery for 13 years in our town. Most towns would be overjoyed to have such a jewel actively contributing to drug-free citizens, strengthening families, and building a healthy community. As a resident, I'm thankful for ARC. These individuals have not only demonstrated enormous courage and strength in their own recovery, but then they selflessly turned around and gave generously to support the recovery of young and old, struggling to find victory over addiction. The members who are here tonight and those at home awaiting your decision arguably are heroes in our town. Imagine if, in their meetings with a new attendee, that they put their new attendee through the stall and delay tactics your board wielded at its last meeting, I'm here to tell you lives would actually be lost. If asked how I would feel to see the Antioch Recovery Club sign on Route 173, my response would be truly grateful that our town was actually committed to its vision statement and upholding its stated values. I thank you for the opportunity to make these comments tonight. I respect the work that you do. I know you are amazing individuals working hard to get it right every time you're here. And I thank you for your service to the community. Thank you. Car Carissa Wenstrom. Good evening. My name is Carissa Wenstrom. I'm a resident of Antioch, but I am currently a graduate student at Marquette University working on a doctorate in occupational therapy. This is my final exam week, but I came home tonight to speak with you because a dear friend, Joshua York, just lost his battle with addiction. Josh grew up in Lake Villa, attended our Antioch community schools, played in our parks, made friends with our schoolmates and helped his neighbors. He was well regarded by all who knew him. He was raised by good people who truly loved him. 
He was a very dear friend to me and my family. Josh was a wonderful person with an unbelievably kind heart. At the age of 18, Josh began using alcohol and drugs and it slipped from his control. Things unraveled very quickly. Josh OD'd on December 2nd and was pronounced brain dead just last week on December 5th at 26 years old. Everyone who knew Josh is brokenhearted by this unspeakable loss. His family GoFundMe turned into targeting mounting medical bills to now sadly raising funds for his funeral expenses. Good people from good families and good towns experience addiction. And I can only wish that Josh had been connected with the Antioch Recovery Club. His outcome may have been very different. Helping their neighbors is what the Antioch Recovery Club does. The only thing I would want anyone driving through our town to see is that there is a place that will help them with recovery if they need to be, because we are a people who care enough to do what is right. Thank you. Paul, <clears throat> Paul Green. Uh, Paul Green, 43225 North Tree Road, Antioch. I'm here just to reflect on some outstanding individuals that we've lost in this past year. Chief uh, Foley of the Fire District, Antioch Fire District. Uh, Mike Haley, former mayor and uh, village administrator and currently Dean Peterson. All these people had one thing in common. They wanted the best for Antioch. I've sat on the board with for Chief Foley and with Dean Peterson. I worked for Mike Haley as a, when he was a village administrator. These are people that their dedication is can never be replaced. And I just wanna thank everyone that uh, knew them and helped them. And I hope that their dedication lives on through all of us. And then um, I just wanna say uh, to everybody, uh, there's a book I, I like to read to kids. It was the night before Christmas. And to make a short story, or to make the story short, I'm just going to quote the last uh, one of the last lines in the in the book. So happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. All right, thank you. All right, now um, we are going to move on to the uh, consent agenda which there are four items on the consent agenda. Are there any uh, requests to uh, remove any of those items from the consent agenda? If not, I would entertain a motion so and moved. second. Motion, Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second, Trustee Peterson. Uh, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes, motion carries. Uh, first item on the regular business is consideration and approval of payments of accounts payable as prepared by staff in the amount of $615,701.61. Um, do I have a motion and a second? Move to approve. Motion, Trustee Dominiac. Second. Second, Trustee Peterson. Uh, any questions or comments from the board members on the um, accounts payable? I'm giving you a minute, Trustee Pierce. I can't see you, but uh, why do you think I'm going to ask questions? All right, go for it. <laughs> I got no questions. <laughs> oh, no questions. Okay. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Pierce. Aye. Masick. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Luthart. Yes. Dominiac. Yes. Uh, five voting yes. Motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda. And I'm going to just amend this on its face. Um, rescission of the action taken at the November 30th, 2022 Village Board of Trustees meeting related to um, an ordinance of granting special use permit for a planned unit development to operate a recovery club at 466 West Illinois Route 173, Antioch, Illinois. 
Make a motion. Motion, Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second, Trustee Peters. Can we send it? Yes. Yeah, no. Okay. okay. Um, any discussion okay. regarding this item? Trustee Pierce here. I'm, I'm glad somebody made the motion. Uh, huh? You know, I, I happen to be in Philadelphia right now, and I'm about half a mile from where the, the Constitution was signed, debated, signed, and, and put into action. Um, and I've been reminded one of the things that we have to con con consider when we're sitting before the at the board is people have a right to uh, a pursuit of their life, liberty, and happiness. Um, so um, I, I think overall, we um, by rescinding this and revisiting it, um, we we will fulfill that constitutional right. Um, but I, I do want to clarify that my concerns last last board meeting were about notification of people, not that they the distances, not how many letters were sent out, um, but it was the 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 understanding that was given to people as to what would occur. And I never asked for a list of addictions. I um, that was I I don't know who brought that up. Uh, but um, I just think that there, I got received several phone calls and messages from people who were concerned that they did not understand what was going on there. and They wanted to have their voice heard. And that leads me to the Constitution again. Everybody has their right to have their voice heard. And that's what I was striving for as my number one goal was letting everybody have their voice heard. Um, and then I do have concerns about the parking. I think there should be more parking. And so I would think there should be a line five on there. The parking needs a further review and the lighting mm -hmm. needs further review, which is, I think, line item number four. But um, in light of, you know, the people have had a chance to voice their concerns and those who are in favor of this have also voiced their concerns. Um, I think it's time to move forward with this. So I would support rescinding it. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, I, I, I want to speak in peace. So I was misinformed, probably my fault for not paying more attention to this. So I, I hate to do this uh, and, and make this about me. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I had family members use this facility. Um, this touches home. Um, and, and, and I hate to say this, um, uh, you know, the concern I brought up and, 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 and I, I just get scared and, and I'm probably 100% wrong that people, people won't use it because it's, it's on a public right away. And, and I'm probably the first one to say I'm 100% wrong. And I sat with parents, you know, with a family member at Rosecrans Gateway, and I cried with them. And, 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 and it was a, not a two-year struggle, not a five-year struggle, eight-year struggle, and I've seen parents lose their children. To Mrs. Van Deen, I'm so sorry. I've seen the pain. I was on the rescue squad. I'm probably the only one that's given Narcan uh, that's on the board currently and seen someone come out of it, get a life safe, thank goodness, but I've seen the after effect. Um, I've given money to the organization, um, and I, I, I would take, and I'm the person that I've given speech on the fentanyl problem that's coming up um, during Halloween. Um, I don't think one's enough. We probably need two, three. Um, um, I understand what the program is. I sat in that parking lot and made sure my family member went to the classes to make sure that person was there. And, and my concern that they didn't go next door or somewhere else. Um, it's a needed, needed facility. Um, the parking lot issue, uh, I'm gonna say this right now, never was a problem when there was a church or weddings. So I don't understand the argument. Uh, when, when, when I spoke to peace, it was about both sides being heard. And I don't think both sides are being heard. Now we can move on and pass it because it's a needed event. 
and 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 the more people and i thought about the situation being now on 173 maybe maybe it's a, you know drug awareness and maybe that's what's needed in ANIAC. maybe instead of putting it where gateway is way off on the side of the road where rosecrans is way off on the side of the road it's not on the main stretch and haywood off off in an alley somewhere maybe maybe we'll, we'll set precedence so i'm for this 100 i'm for rehab because i've been around with my kids growing up to see the painful what what kids my 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 kids and their friends and the situation of what drugs do alcohol does so i'm in favor and 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 that gal i apologize i didn't catch your name didn't write it down um the pain of losing someone close and you and and it's it's terrible for the person you lose but it's worse for the family members it's it's you're helpless you're just helpless and and so everybody uh, I, you know the the pain that was caused at the last meeting um, i just thought both sides should be heard it was going to go through i was a yes vote all along so um i hope you got my yes vote on this one. That so I'm going to cut it short. I'm pontificating too much. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Uh, roll call, please. Your Honor. Your Honor. Yes. I, I just want to address the parking issue. My concern with the parking, since it was brought up, I want to answer that is the amount of handicapped parking. Every time we look at a parking lot, I think we need more and more handicapped parking available. Um, so that's my concern. I want to make sure we have enough handicap parking there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Roll call, please. Pierce. Yes. Masick. Absolutely. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Luther. Yes. Dominic. Yes. Five voting yes. Motion carries. Uh, second item on the agenda is consideration approval of an ordinance granting a special use permit for a plan unit development to operate a recovery club at 466 West Illinois Route 173, Antioch, Illinois, ordinance number 22-11-59. I'd entertain a motion and a second, waving the second. Second. All right, motion trustee second. Bluthart, second trustee Dominiac. Any discussion on this item? All right, roll call, please. Pierce? Um, I oh, sorry, I sorry. Sorry, I thought you were going to go around. No, no, okay. Um, any discussion? Not in the cloud. All right. Yeah, I, I just want to. Yeah, that's a good statement. <laughs> I just want to uh, speak to the parking situation because I thought about this and I've been up on that property. And um, according to the staff report, there's adequate parking. And I think one of the concerns that was expressed was that if there was more than 25 people, where would people park? If you've been up there, and I think everybody has been, there's about what almost two acres and there's a lot of grass that you can park on. Um, and as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about, since I'm a member of St. Peter's Church, um, when that church is filled, which will be happening on Christmas, people will be parking all over the place and they will be, the number of people will be exceeding the number of parking spaces on the St. Peter property. So I don't see it as a problem. I think that um, there's plenty of opportunity there for parking. Mayor, what agenda item are we on now? I'm losing place here. Okay. All right, seven. Uh, we're on seven. Yeah, we're so this is uh, um, rescind, we rescinded going back to planning and zoning. All right, I'm, losing place. I'm losing place here. All right. Anyone else? Any other comments? All right. Roll call, please. Pierce? Yes. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominia? Yes. All right, five voting yes. Motion carries. Um, no, no, actually, um, I'm sorry, there's one more thing. The title and um, the first sentence have center, so we need to yeah, just we'll amend fix it. that, clean that up. Sure. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You don't have to sit through all this if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Unless you want to stay and hear about this. After the next one, the your eyes stuff. are going to glaze over. It's a lot of tax levy stuff. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.
All right, next item on the agenda is consideration and approval of an ordinance adding section 7-1-5 to the Antioch Village Code regarding golf carts on village streets, ordinance number 22-12-60. Do I have a motion and a second waiving the second reading? So moved. Motion, Trustee Peterson. Second. Second, Trustee Bluthart. Um, discussion. I'll start with uh, Trustee Pierce. No discussion, Your Honor. Trustee Masick. No, I just hope no one gets hurt. So I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Trustee Peterson. No, no discussion. Here. Trustee Bluthart. Uh, my only thoughts on this is that uh, I'm all in favor of this. I just want to make sure that the organizations, everyone that's involved in it, that we we go with safety, safety, safety first, so that we don't have to come and address this issue down the road and worry about this issue or have someone getting killed or injured. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to see this get to this point. Trustee Dominiak. Um, I actually do have a couple questions. Um, when I read the ordinance, um, the first line speaks to that the definition of golf cart is in the Illinois statute. Um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't be more specific so that the people that are gonna be looking at the ordinance don't have to go and look at the Illinois statute. Um, yeah, it's, it's A under 715. The purpose of the section golf cart shall have the meaning described by section, et cetera, of the Illinois Vehicle Code. I just think since there's there's confusion as to what kind of vehicle this is that's allowed, because people keep saying these are not the golf carts that you have on a golf course, that we should be a little more specific. Um, my next question is, um, I know that this is, if you're licensed to drive a vehicle, uh, you can drive these. Um, does that include uh, 16, 17 year olds? Do they have any restrictions on their ability to drive these? Um, so that would be another question and do we need to specify that? Um, in looking at what's necessary in terms of vehicle equipment, I don't see any reference to seatbelt or shoulder harnesses and do we wanna put that in there? Sure. So staff has been advised that um, as a non-home rule unit, we cannot put further restrictions uh, on this. Uh, it, it's according to state statute. We're, we're, we're adopting basically what it allows for in state statute. Well, that's unfortunate. And that's just probably another discussion in another meeting. Um, I continue to be concerned about the fact, and I've said this from the beginning, and I'm not against the concept of this, but that they can cross 59 and 173 and 83. And if someone is coming from Heron Harbor, they're gonna cross 59, which has a 35 mile an hour speed limit, which no one follows, because I use that access all the time. And then I drive off a of Harden to turn right to go on 173. And there are trucks coming around the curb by the cemetery at 55 miles an hour, probably. I don't clock them, but I can tell they're not going 35. And same thing coming around the other direction. So I, I, I'm really hesitant to vote for this because I think it's going to be dangerous. And I understand that what the statute says, but um, I think our right is to, to vote yes or no based on what we think is the safety. So um, thank you for clarifying about the seat belt and shoulder harness. I appreciate that. Any other discussion before we um, call the question? Just one question. Didn't we have a sunset clause in this? What, that they can't drive after sunset? I'm asking, no, I'm asking the mayor that what we, that, that we had that, a, that it, yeah, that, that, that we re revisit this after a year to see if it's working. To make sure everything that we, it's not good, we don't need. It, yeah, the board, the board always has, you know, it's prerogative to repeal an ordinance, modify an ordinance, rescind the ordinance. If, if you know, there's something that. I know, but didn't, didn't we put that in for in discussion that we wanted to tweak that so it comes up on, on autopilot? I, I, go ahead, Jim. No, sorry. Hi, Mr. Chair, if I may. Uh, hi, Trustee. Um, I thought we said we weren't going to put a sunset provision in there. And then if we came back after a year, we would revisit it because we have that ability to do so. Um, I thought it was discussed and we said we weren't going to go in that yeah, direction. I, would, I don't recall, to be honest, but I would say that 
this would be something if that we should revisit. Yeah, in a, in after the next season to um, see how it's working. I'm assuming there's going to be some tweaks to this since it's brand new. Um, doesn't matter to me either way. It's just okay, a good sure. idea. Yeah, just yeah I didn't see that in there. I've seen some shaking yes, some shaking no. So, um, but yeah, if we, um, I think between the timeline is April to October, December for December first. That then a year from now we should be looking at this to make sure it works accordingly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, trustee. Oh, um, was that it, Trustee Mesa? Pardon me. Yeah. Okay. A trustee Dominiac on your question. Um, Illinois Administrative Rules 10.42.010 states that a 16-year-old is able to drive a golf cart consistent with the remaining provisions of the Illinois Vehicle Code for standard operation of vehicles. Thank you. I asked that question because the question was raised to me by a couple of residents that were concerned that teenagers would be driving sure. these and um, concerned about that. So. Good. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion before the question? Otherwise, um, roll call, please. Pierce? Yes. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluther? Yes. Dominiac? No. Four voting yes, one voting no motion carries. Um, all right. Here we go. Number nine, consideration and approval of an ordinance providing for the levy of taxes for the fiscal year beginning May 1st, 2022, and ending April 30th, 2023. Ordinance number 22-12-61, entertain a motion and a second, waiving the second reading. So, so move, second. Hold on. You got oh. it? Peterson. Peterson, uh, motion trustee Peterson, second trustee Dominiac. Any discussion regarding this item? Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes motion carries. Next item, number 10. Consideration and approval of an ordinance abating the tax levied for the year 2022 to pay the principal and interest on $1,830,000 general bond obligation, refunding bonds, utility tax, alternate source, revenue source, series 2019. Ordinance number 22-12-62. I'd entertain a motion in a second. Waving the second reading. So, so I'll move second. <laughs> Waving the second reading. All right. Trustee, uh, motion trustee Peterson, second trustee Dominiac. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes, motion carries. Item 11. Consideration and approval of an ordinance abating the tax levy for the year 2022 to pay the principal and interest on four million ninety-five thousand general obligation bonds, alternate revenue source series 2017, ordinance number 22-12-63. Motion in the second, waiving the second reading. So moved. Motion, Trustee Bluthart. Second. Second, Trustee Peterson. Any discussion? Roll call. Pierce. Aye. Masick. Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yeah. Five voting yes, motion carries. 12, consideration and approval of an ordinance abating the taxes levied for the year 2022 to pay the principal and interest on 7,065,000 general obligation refunding bonds, alternate revenue source series 2021 of the Village of Antioch, Lake County, Illinois. Ordinance number 22-12-64. We have a motion and a second, waiving the second reading. So moved. Trustee Boothart, motion. Second. Second, Trustee Peterson, waving the second reading. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes, motion carries. Item number 13, consideration and approval of an ordinance abating the taxes levied for the year 2022 to pay the principal of an interest on 20680000 general obligation bonds, business district sales tax alternate revenue source. Series 2021 of the Village of Antioch, Lake County, Illinois, ordinance number 22-12-65. Do so I have a motion and a second, waiving the second reading? So moved. Trustee, uh, motion trustee Dominiac. Second. Second, trustee Peterson. Discussion? Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. 
All right, item number 14, consideration and approval of an ordinance for the Village of Antioch, Illinois Special Service Area, number one, approving administrative report and special tax roll for the levy year 2022 and abating special service area taxes. Ordinance 22-12-66, we have a motion and a second, waiving the second reading. So moved. Motion Trustee Dominiac. Second. Second Trustee Bluthart. Roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes. Motion carries. Get in there. Number 15, consideration and approval of an ordinance for the Village of Antioch, Illinois Special Service Area Number 2, approving administrative report and special tax roll for levy year 2022 and abating special service area taxes ordinance number 22-12-67 do i have a motion and a second waiving the second reading so moved. motion trustee peterson second second trustee dominiac any discussion roll call please pierce aye masick yes peterson yes bluthart yes dominiac yes five voting yes motion carries Last item on the regular business is consideration of a resolution accepting the Village of Antioch Police Pension Fund Municipal Compliance Report for fiscal year ended April 30th, 2022. Um, do I have a motion and a second? So moved. Motion Trustee Dominiac. Second. Second uh, Trustee Peterson. Any discussion on that item? Right, roll call, please. Pierce? Aye. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Bluthart? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes, zero voting no. Motion carries. I'm so proud of myself. I did not skip one of these items <laughs> or screw up a trustee's name. I got them all in a row. All right. Uh, next item, administrator's report. Administrator Kine. Sure. Oh, all right, no report. Um, although the only thing I will mention for public knowledge um, and the administrator can fill us in, I believe tomorrow we have another village green meeting. Um, so the park materials are being picked. We're ordering items from all over the world that are gonna take a while to get here. So the progress is um, going on every day. Um, and we'll have another meeting tomorrow and we'll give an update where the park's going. Um, when do we expect bids to start on that? Sorry to put you on the spot. No, that's fine. Um, we're more than 50% through the design uh, construction documents. Um, I'm being told we're roughly on schedule to be bidding this winter. Um, to me, that's in the January or February timeframe. So you'll be considering awarding a, uh, a contract to a general contractor, I would think in the February, Marchish timeframe. Um, the mayor was referencing some long lead time items like the gazebo, which is um, coming from Italy. Um, so we may, to get a, a jump on some of these things that may take six or eight or 12 months to get, we may order before we select a contractor. Um, but I'll give you more details on that as they become apparent to me. I have a call, couple calls coming up to look at some of these items. So those items are more expensive and they will come before the board uh, for authorization to spend the, those types of amounts. Um, they'll be just separate from the main contract that the uh, general will have on the project. Thank you. Um, Village clerk, any report? Uh, the Village Clerk's Office is open to file petitions for the April election um, tomorrow and Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And then Monday is the last day to file. And that time frame is from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, yeah, just uh, one clarification for the record. Um, it was pointed out um, by the village administrator that the packet has the correct year for item number 13 but the agenda says series 2021 and it's actually series 2022 so i just want to clear that clarify that for the record um <clears throat> any trustee reports other than those received in writing i'll start uh with trustee pierce or trustee Masick. not from me your honor 
Trustee Masick. Just mine. I just wish everybody a happy holiday. See everybody next year. I'll be out on medical leave for my fourth back surgery. All right. Good luck. Yeah. And uh, hopefully you can golf pretty soon. Yeah. That's uh, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, take care. Merry, yeah. Merry Christmas. And um, how about in the room? Anything, Trustee Peterson? Yes. I'd All like right. to uh, wish everyone a happy holidays. Um, health and good fortune next year for everyone. Ed, um, I hope your back surgery goes well. Thank you. And I just like to um, comment on Mrs. Sue Stevens sitting in the back. Um, it's great to see you here tonight. And um, I just want you to know you've got a lot of support here. Thank you. That's it. That's right. it, Your Honor. All right. Um, Trustee Bluthart, Trustee Dominiac. What do you think? <laughs> yes, time, um, yeah. a couple things <laughs> Sunday is the tree judging oh, yeah. and someone up here has is part of an organization that has a tree so go vote um, and be there from 3 to 3 30 and um, Saturday or Friday night there are 12 businesses in town that uh, have gotten together for their annual O shopping night from four to eight and anybody who shops can pick up uh all sorts of great things at the stores and enter a raffle for a basket that they all put together. Um, and then lastly, I didn't do it uh, today, but you know, I like to read the paper and rip things out. And there was a great article in there the other day about um, what Mundelein is doing with the Wurtz property. And I think that it's something that just really speaks to how people want to live close to downtown. So I'll share that with everybody. Um, and I also echo, um, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays to everybody and uh, look forward to a great 2023. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, before we do a motion to adjourn, I just want to thank everybody for their hard work over the uh, holiday season uh, with the parades and the parks and Santa. Um, I also would like to make sure everybody remembers that we still are selling Yifty gift cards. So if you need a last minute gift for somebody in your family, uh, many restaurants and um, shops in town will accept that. So figure it like your little um, gift card for everything Antioch. Um, other than that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion Trustee Dominiac. Moved. Second Trustee Masick. Um, roll call, please. Pierce? I'd like to say no, but yes. Masick? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Luther? Yes. Dominiac? Yes. Five voting yes. Motion um, carries. Meeting adjourned at 755.